Hey, welcome to the Solid Face Professional Training. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to receive our alerts for our weekly training videos. Let's keep drawing our bench vise, moving on to modeling the fixed jaw. And this is a friendly reminder that you can access every measurement of our part. Starting by opening a new part, let's habilitate the YZ plane, making multiple lines available. And we'll go to the origin point. We're drawing all of the part contours, just like this, and we're making the extrusion. Got it? Okay, after we confirm the dimensions, we'll habilitate the extrude command, selecting any geometry line, adding the width of our part as the distance, which will be 40. All right, so now we'll draw that tear in the middle of the part. For doing so, we need to select this part's face and activate Sketch on it. Habilitate the Rectangle command and activate the relative point. Selecting the upper right side of it is the reference, like this. Then we'll confirm the dimensions, as we're altering them later with the correct measure. The dimension of the y-axis will be 13. The x-axis will be 2. The rectangle's length will be 87, and its width will be 14. After that, we'll round the tear using the fillet command, okay? So we're going to select two lines where the command will be applied and input a radius of 7. We're doing so on all four edges and erasing any remaining line. Are you with me? So without finishing the sketch, we'll habilitate the extrude command, activating the cut option and clicking on OK. Now we're focusing on creating those threaded holes on the bottom of the part, selecting the face and activating sketch. Habilitate the arc circle command and activate relative point. Using the upper left point as a reference, we're adding the distances of 5 on the y-axis, 9.5 on the x-axis, and 1.5 is the radius. So that we don't need to keep drawing those circles a lot, let's select the circle and habilitate the command copy. As the reference for this operation, use the center of the circle itself and set the distance between the circles as 30. We're doing that again, but now we're selecting both circles, right? And adding the distance between them is 37. We're also adding the holes only on those circles as we're mirroring them to the other half later. Well, now we'll habilitate the hole command, and then we'll set the hole, keeping simple selected. We'll activate the V-type angle as well as the thread creation option, which we're using the ISO standard, okay? The format will be M3.5x0.6. Then we just need to add the depth of the hole, which will be 10. And then we're selecting the face and center of where it will be drawn. Repeat those steps on the three remaining circles. To add those four holes on the other half of the part, we're adding a plane in the middle so we can mirror them. So habilitate the plane command and add a distance of 65, selecting the reference face where the plane will start. If the plane goes in the wrong direction, just select Reverse and add the distance value again. So we're habilitating the mirror command, and we'll select the four hole operations on our command tree. We'll activate the reference plane option, selecting the plane we created before. Now you just need to click OK, and the holes will be drawn. Now we'll draw the hole where the spindle will be attached. We're doing its thread differently, all right, as we're doing it in 3D, not only in a representative way. Are you ready? First of all, we're selecting the face in which the hole will be drawn, and we're activating Sketch. Using Arc Circle, we'll activate Relative Point, adding a value of 20 on the y-axis, 13 on the x-axis, and the circle's radius will be 6.5. After that, select Extrude and make the operation with cut habilitated. To make the thread in 3D, we're going to need some kind of a way to make the command be able to cut the material. So for that, we're habilitating the helix curve command, which will create a spiral path with the step we add and the needed number of revolutions. In this case, we're adding five on the pitch, which is the step of our thread, and five on revolution, which will be the number of revolutions we'll need to create the whole whole path. We'll select where the spiral will begin and click on OK. Now we're adding a centralized plane to this hole. For that, we'll habilitate plane and add the distance of 13, having the superior side of the part as reference. Activating the sketch, let's start drawing this geometry. Habilitating rectangle, we're starting from our spiral's origin point, 
drawing a square 2.5 per 2.5. As you can see, I drew this square going out of the hole because when we make our next operation, the thread will be with the right size. And then we'll finish the sketch selecting the sweep tool. We'll activate the cut option because we want to remove material. So we're selecting the spiral, which will be the way our square will be cut, then select the square. Now apply the operation and the thread will be made. To finish, we're altering the material as we're used to, changing it to carbon steel. That's it. The fixed jaw is complete. Well, guys, that's it for today. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to receive our alerts for our weekly training videos.